Here we go. Hey, Mariam. Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? Yeah, Good, I'm all thank right. you. I'm okay. I'm okay. Uh, so finally, <laughs> finally we are doing this. Finally, we're connecting this. So thank you for organizing yeah. it and being flexible. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, let's let's talk about something which we couldn't before. So yes, let's I'm gonna start about, it again. Yeah, let's talk about yourself. Uh, if you if you could tell us a bit about yourself about your journey to this country and mm. your inspiration and your journey to the art world how art or because sure. how you get this motivation how you get this aspirations and yeah how this all happens sure i'll do my best to <laughs> keep it brief because yeah. i can talk too much sometimes um so i've always been interested in um drawing since i was mm. very young since i remember Mm. That was the main thing that kept me really occupied. And it was the main thing that helped me stand out because I was always very shy. Mm. And doing art actually allowed others to notice it because I always wanted to hide. And I could see that it seemed that it was the thing I was best at. I was mm. always average at school. It was okay, <laughs> but that was the only thing that I really enjoyed giving mm. my time and attention to it. So I was better than many kids around me. Oh. And... Um, so that because of that, it basically became, I, it was something I really enjoyed and I could see, oh, it seemed to be working as well to get attention. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it just encouraged me to do more. So oh. I, was, I could be obsessively drawing mm -hmm. um, just to keep myself busy a lot of times. Because when I was a kid, it's obviously, it was different to these days. There's lots of distractions, yeah. but I grew up in Tehran in Iran, mm -hmm. it was early 80s, we, mm -hmm. our TV had only two channels and that was all only like <laughs> half a day. So there wasn't anything to do. It was with my grandparents, there was nothing to do. I mean, my best friend, my, 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 <laughs> my best friend was my granddad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bless him, he would, you know, so he would really tell me stories and, and you know, play and make paper, paper planes together and things like that. But a lot of times meant that I had to basically occupy myself and art was the only way in most cases. And of course, I love reading as well. So this was always with me. So obviously I studied graphic design because that seemed to be the logical thing to do. For me, it was really easy to, I was lucky that for me, it was quite simple, even though I worked quite a lot to get in there because I mm -hmm. studied when I was like uh, the year before I finished uh, um, high school. Uh, mm -hmm. I could kind of reserve my place in the university because I kind of did early exam. Uh, but for me, it didn't feel like work, even though I was, I was dedicating a lot of time to it. But because <laughs> it was fun and natural, <laughs> it was it was it was easy. So um, I was lucky that I had that kind of. Um, um, passion and uh, interest. So after that, I studied in Iran and I could always come to England, which was always a surprise for people. Why are you in Iran? Like, mm. why aren't you going to England? What's wrong yeah. with you? All my friends mm. questioned my sanity <laughs> because everybody was trying to get out, yeah. find a way to study abroad. And I was there quite happily studying in Iran when I could actually go to the UK. Yeah. Because I had, I was born in the UK. Um, oh, I yeah. lived in Iran, mm -hmm. so um, lived only only. I was born in in Birmingham. Lived for two, lived in England for two months, and then my mom took me to Iran, mm -hmm. separated from my dad. So you know, it, it was it was just lucky that I could easily just decide and come. I know how hard it is for many people to migrate uh, when they have to go through lots of different visa applications yeah. and different ways to get here. But um, yeah, so I. I could just decide and come. So I decided that, okay, I'm going to go and just explore and just see what it's like I settle in the UK, thinking it was going to be super easy because everybody's <laughs> always said I was so lucky and it was, yeah. it was going to be so straightforward for me that I had the British passport. Obviously, I came and realized, ah, I was so <laughs> wrong. It's, <laughs> it is still very hard to find a place in a new place, in a new country, even though I could speak English, but it was a still very, very challenging. So I can't imagine when, when you have lots of other for people that don't speak the language, that they have visa problems, yeah. have all these struggles when they're on their own. I had, I had my uncles here to support me in a way that I have family, mm -hmm. but I can, I can imagine how much harder it is for people that don't have these supports. But mm -hmm. for me, it was really challenging still. Um, 
so yeah, it took me a while to really find my anchor and um, really find myself because I noticed when I when I arrived in the UK, I realized I actually had no idea who I was or what I really wanted, even though I knew I like art. And um, then I realized that graphic design was not my thing. I really didn't enjoy working as a graphic designer. I tried it a bit. I was like, no, I did some work experience and I realized that was not a good idea. So it took me some years to to really settle in the UK and the first thing was to find the artist because that was what I was deprived of when, yep. I, when I arrived I realized oh as an artist you really need to connect to the artistic community you need artist friends because I had friends around me that were not artists and it was just very difficult to connect on, mm -hmm. on other levels yep. so it's very crucial to have the community and um, yep. that was the main thing I suffered it was yep. it was not not knowing artists and not knowing the community and it just seemed like a the most difficult thing even though in iran i had lots of friends lots of artist friends and it was just um all very natural because i went through uni and you know i had all these network of people that were artists and professionals and um it, we, it helped me with my sanity because everybody else that were not artists considered me crazy all the time <laughs> yeah <laughs> as a joke they were like oh you're so mad yeah, no, no, funny, funny, funny you, you mentioned earlier about <laughs> there was just one uh, channel on television. I still remember <laughs> even in, back in, uh, in Pakistan yeah, when we were very young. So there was just one, 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 oh, one, yeah. one channel and that channel was governed and monitored by government. And so yeah, nothing on that, on that, no, on no, that no. One, yeah. one channel. Uh, you could have uh, against the government, the current government, no. uh, and the government was, uh, it was a, uh, it was a martial law. It was a dictatorship uh, by yes. Zia yeah. uh, Maybe you know him or not. It's a long, Roughly, long, yes. Yes. long ago. Aware, uh, we, yeah. were, we were, we were, yeah, we were very small. We were very small. It's, it's mid, uh, it, it's uh, mid eighties and uh, uh, until. Yeah, yeah. Um, 88. So, yeah, uh, I, uh, I remember one channel going by the government. I know. But you know, like, I kind of feel like that kind of childhood was, I'm glad I had that because what it did for me was um, help me develop my imagination because I really had to entertain myself and not be bored because a lot of times there was just nothing to do. And I didn't have a lot of friends around me and my grandmother was quite specific about yeah. people that I could hang out with and a lot of times I couldn't go to anybody's house and it was just not really easy to mingle as a child and socialize so I was stuck with adults and <laughs> yeah. old, old adults and you yeah. know, some of them were very entertaining the stories they could tell you know so I grew up with a very old generation and that really helped me to kind of um hear about their kind of upbringing which is very different and like the stories and it was just really fascinating actually i had a very that way it was in a way it could be really boring but for me it was a very interesting kind of connection to much older generation because mm -hmm. it was my grandparents and then all the family members that were all around the same age so a lot of times i was just around old people <laughs> so 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 you, you you meant you were saying probably that you Mentally, you grew up quite quickly, like uh, you, you I think became so. mature. Yes. yes and no. <laughs> Maybe on some, yes and no. I mean, I came when I came to the game, I noticed that, oh my God, when I see people, but I was around 25, 26. Mm -hmm. And then I realized it was around 20, 2002. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, and then I could see people that were around my age, they were far more mature, they were more mm -hmm. independent, they were very clever and I felt like, oh my god, I'm like a baby when it went, because I, I always lived with my grandpa, grandmother, um, so I, she was very specific and very controlling and mm -hmm. so I, I didn't have much freedom uh, to kind of be independent, every time I wanted to feel independent she would um, she would find it a bit uh i don't know uh, even i remember i was 18 i wanted to go shopping she would say like mm, take take a grown-up with you because mm -hmm. you know the people are not going to give you the right price i think you're a kid and they're going to i don't know rob you or <laughs> just give you a bad price so she just always belittled me in that way so i always felt like i was like clueless so i had to really exit be that independent version of myself that i was mm -hmm. never kind of 
um, comfortably allowed to be, even though I had to really kind of push it, but I could see that I've got a long way to go. So I had to learn a lot of things the hard way. So yeah. in some areas, I could be very mature. I could relate to much older people. Yeah. But then when it came to my own age and people that did uh, in my age, um, just I was a bit behind. So I had to kind of do a lot of catching up to do. But, you know, it took me a while, but um, but it was kind of necessary. And I got to the point of being able to connect to artistic community and then kind of start exhibiting and also exploring other areas of art that I never thought I would um, be good at, like performance and um, acting and kind yeah. of little theater. And, and it was great. And being in London and kind of connecting to different artists, it pro provided me with opportunities that I could um, start trying different things and working out or experiment, experimenting. And that was so lovely to yes. allow that time to experiment and not be always having this narrowed idea of I was supposed to be just a painter because I, yeah. everybody also always saw me as a painter. Um, and in, in Iran as well, I, I kind of was interested in lots of other things, but I just stopped with the painting because uh, I enjoyed it. and it kind of felt like the the main thing I should focus on. But in England, in, in London, I could see, oh, there's lots of other things I could explore and try. Yeah. And I don't have to be perfect at it. You know, I can just play and have fun. And yeah. it was fantastic. I'm so grateful that I had the opportunity to open up to other possibilities. And now I consider myself a, a just, you know, um, a, just the title of artist and it's kind of open-ended you know a lot of things i do it can just fit in there so yeah no, <laughs> interdisciplinary <laughs> yeah uh, multidisciplinary so, different names so from the, from an from an art perspective artist uh, point of view for example how you respond how you feel about this the current scenario current situation the uh, uh, which is our of course theme as well uh, about uh, of our exhibition but how do you do you feel about this uh, pandemic and this lockdown and the situation which is the world is going uh, through this uh, strange well, strange kind of time it's a very strange time it's a very very strange time and um i basically i think because of different life experiences that i've had mm -hmm. over the years of living in london uh, and then living on a boat and having a kind of a slightly adventurous lifestyle um, that I responded to change. I, I learned to respond to change in a different way personally. I'm just talking from my own personal experience. So adjusting to the pandemic and adjusting to the lockdown uh, isolation kind of um, reality was actually very easy surprisingly easy for me for, for me so it was something i just adjusted so like okay this is my reality now and and didn't resist it didn't uh, question it i just accepted yeah. it as like okay this is this is what it is at the mm -hmm. moment this is how we live and um i found it quite peaceful to begin with and i mm -hmm. felt that um because the beginning obviously now things are winding down and the shock of it and the it was i don't know it was kind of um in a way it was a, a very interesting wake-up call i think for many mm -hmm. and for me it was an opportunity to go within and kind of distract stop being distracted by mm -hmm. um the world around me mm -hmm. and be aware of what is the pressure and i could feel like a lot of pressure was lifted i could see that um the way i was functioning and working and there was this outer pressure on me of like the way um, I had to kind of, I, the way I was keeping busy and the way I was uh, kind of focusing on what needed to be done and not allowing enough time to myself, mm. even though I thought I was creating a lot of mm. me time, but mm. I could feel the need that I had personally to just go quiet and be mm. still and just <laughs> embrace this opportunity to be still. And I felt um, that it, I needed a long rest. And mm -hmm. um, I felt very privileged that I'm <laughs> able to rest because well, there's nothing to do, I have to rest. And um, so I think it, it can be a renewal. Uh, uh -huh. And I think this is, a, this is like a change, as if it's a change of era, um, of change of an era. It's like um, a new beginning something that um i think nobody's going to stay nothing is going to be um 
nothing is going back to normal and mm. um, because what's coming is our reality is completely changed it's very different so it's a new world in a way because of experiences that people had because of this pandemic um all the challenges and all the shock and all everything that everyone had to put up with in different ways and it was yeah. different for each family and each person and people with children it was a different experience people that had loved ones um the battling the virus losing losing yeah. them to the virus so it's just lots of major changes been happening and the fear of it and so I think what's being created is completely new um, reality that we're still kind of not really sure what it is, but I have a very good feeling about it. I feel it's like a restart button as though we can really focus on what really matters or what's the most important thing in our life. And perhaps this time allowed that time of contemplation um, for some. And I think, um, yeah, I see it as a very positive thing, but that's my approach to kind of challenges and, always realize that if i um, look at what i can learn from a situation uh -huh. i can move forward mm -hmm. rather than feel trapped or feel yeah. a victim so yeah. it's just my it's just how i've learned to react to situations and i think it will be different for yeah. each individual yeah. of course it's never going to be the same but um i really embraced it and i really accept that you know things are out of my control and <laughs> Nobody can really say they can control this and mm -hmm. I can just focus on what I can do for me and my surrounding and you know, so just kept me kind of Jump focused on what mattered most. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh, how do you uh, think that uh, this, like you, you, you just said about a normal, a new normal, Will, yeah. uh, will 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 arise from this situation and uh, how do you define a new normal what do you think that a new uh, i think, new, normal? I think uh, new normal going i mean i think in a way new normal i think it's going to be with where people's values lie or like how what they yeah. um value in society like now i think it's more than ever is clear how important the nhs is yeah, <laughs> yeah true <laughs> I think the first thing is like, do you see how important it is? You know, like, you know, it's, I think no one's got any doubts, like, like to how valuable it is to have the NHS and, and how people just selflessly worked day and night and still are working. So yeah. I think, I think people are going to realize the important people in the society. And, um, I think they just, um, um they can now they can appreciate um these people more than ever i think that's the first thing that's coming out and then later they go i mean the next thing uh, i would say they can um i think we can all focus on what is the most important thing in our life or what what do we want to do what do we want in our own personal life and i think um, maybe if there were maybe some shallow standards maybe that those are falling away maybe for some people and maybe um, it's helping us to focus on much deeper um, aspects in our life so I think maybe this is going to be it's going to maybe the world is going to be a kinder world maybe there's going to be more empathy maybe we can look out for one another a bit more so these are the things I'm hoping and I'm feeling it's kind of emerging out of this in this new world it's going to be a bit more connected I think we're going to be connected a bit more because of this isolation which is mm. weird, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, 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 I totally get you what you mean. Uh, I hope that you're right, uh, and uh, a new normal will be different than the than the old normal. Um, uh, uh, how do you see uh, your role as an artist and your work and art in general? Uh, um, have a role to play uh, in building this this new normal or bringing the communities together to uh, in 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 uk especially and when i talk about communities i'm more focusing on the the people like yourself or the people who are uh, 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 who are coming from abroad uh, migrants i mean sure. or refugees so how do you think that this can 
bring communities together, build that gap, the bridge, bridge between the communities. Well, I think um, art is a very good glue for different things. <laughs> a lot of people and, and communities can, can connect together through art, whatever this art is. It could be a mm. workshop of any, any sort, any, um. any medium you can think of, I think it's a really good bridge. Um, and I think as, a, as an artist, I think um, I can see the value of that and I can see my responsibility. Um, over the years, I could see that um, how important it is to to share my skills and, and kind of create a space for people to to connect to one another through art, create yep. this glue, mm -hmm. this, this, yeah. this kind of fun glue, you know, mm. like a more of a more like a play, playful glue. Um, <laughs> and I think um, my main aim is to create joy. Personally, I think it's very oh. important to create a joyful and a playful um, atmosphere so mm. through art of whether I'm doing painting or I'm doing performance or the workshops I like to create that playfulness and encourage that childlike approach to mm. creation and you know children get along really well you throw a bunch of kids doesn't matter where they're from doesn't mm. matter the color of the skin whether they can speak their, each other's language or not yep. you put it next to one another they start <laughs> playing even when yeah. they can't speak, you know, um, it's very simple for children to play. And I think we should learn from that. I think adults, we need to um, also play the same way. Um, just get along and, you know, just we just need something. We need excuses to connect. Yep. And I think this playful approach, whether you're making something or creating something, um, either a painting or whatever it is, or it's music or poetry, all of this can really bring that um, childlike playfulness and mm. the way we would naturally connect anyway. <laughs> but, so my aim and I think my, um, my real mission is mm. to connect people to their inner child mm. and uh, to inner child and kind of um, encourage that playfulness and i think a lot of magic and a lot of um exciting happenings mm. start appearing when you connect to that side of yourself and uh, so i'm taking that um the mature i get i'm becoming sillier and sillier and i think um, i'm starting to um become a clown maybe even so i'm thinking yeah clowning is the way to go However you want. Doesn't matter whether I have a red nose or not. I kind of clown, like to be a clown. Clowning or cloning? Cloning, clowning. <laughs> yeah, no. I, no it's, it's good. It's good. I, I really like your idea, your your thought process, and the, the way you way you described things, and uh, the way. So maybe in the end, do you have any questions, or do you have any any, any comments? Well, ha uh, why um this is the first time you're you're organizing an exhibition isn't it yeah th this is the first time i'm doing this and i'm a so bit tell me like well. i'd like to know so it's good i think every time we are best scared we're moving out of our comfort zones and that's when magic happens so it's always good to be a little scared that's a good sign so i mean what made you want to do an exhibition and um the connection of the exhibition to haven coffee so i'd like to oh. know like how we decided to kind of bring bring these people together and Kind so of I, it's, 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 it's a big question. It's basically I wanted to uh, get into uh, migrant arts and refugee arts uh, as well because the Haven Coffee, the one of the idea behind Haven Coffee is to promote refugee and migrant art uh, uh, and through art and culture, like you mentioned, uh, bring refugee community, migrant community, uh, uh, and other communities together, bring them close, uh, closer together. And I personally believe that uh, arts and crafts and the culture is a backbone uh, of any society, which uh, like you mentioned, uh, the word glue, it's, it's a very good word. <laughs> Uh, it, I never it, use that that way. I just yeah, totally it, thought of it. It, it. it brings it brings communities together, and even when we see the UK, uh, and uh, I personally don't believe in borders, and I personally don't believe in having borders. Uh, I'm a very very anti 
and nation, mm. nationalist. Uh, yes, uh, I, I'm the same. I'm yeah. the, I, I uh, resonate so, with that. <laughs> so I think that the, 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 this is a way forward for uh, when we when we speak about these terms like integration and uh, uh, bringing communities together to 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 to, to, to to not assimilate but integrate into the society. Mm. Uh, so, I think when you when you share your food, when you share your songs, when you share the, your language, uh, when you learn a different language, mm. and when you share your language and learn English in return, for example, or when you share so Iranian style of painting or Iranian style of crafts is 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 very different than uh, a greek style of art or uh, ethiopian art or english art so so when you when you bring all these together then a new culture arises new culture yeah. uh, and born. It, all the great cultures have always done that i mean you yeah, yeah. The, and, the, and, the and way it's, that it's, the it's, cultures have developed and, and how and, they're kind of in, inspired one another this has been always are, happening and there are there there are two two types of evolution. One evolution is the human physical evolution, and one evolution is the evolution of your of of your, of, of your heritage, the evolution of your culture, uh, which mm. uh, which 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 comes and which evolve through meeting different people to, to combining combining different 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 people com not not people combining different. Heritage is uh, combining different, uh, different, different societies and cultures. So that's one of the idea behind here in coffee is to, mm. and that's why I'm doing this exhibition. And uh, beautiful. Uh, let's see, let's see how it will work. <laughs> I, I'm sure I'm because sure I, 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 I saw, be... I saw. Of course, people will will see your your work on 15th and during Refugee Week. But I saw your your work, and it's, it's really very, it's very different. Oh, it's very different it's good it's good like good different so yeah <laughs> thank you okay. i mean the, but i'm glad you like because i've noticed mm -hmm. that um a lot of people that like my work they're from different backgrounds different age groups so you know they're from yeah. they're completely mm -hmm. different type of people and they they all seem to like my work um yeah. so that's 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 a really that's a lovely thing to um, kind of appeal to yeah. different type of and and each group or each person sure. would find something specific in there yeah. that they like because sure. there's a lot going on in most of course of course of course, so of course of course sure so people can uh, just decide yes. what they like the different elements that they like are different so it's, yeah no no, no this, that is, this, this is good this is good so yeah definitely uh, uh, hopefully people will come people will join and yes, we'll, we'll see everyone yes. everyone during refugee week so I'm very excited. I'm very yeah, excited to too, see everybody's me, work. Me too. And it's me just too. A, it's a very it's nice, um, nice group of people. Yeah, you know, all the other so artists. So it's so wonderful to be part of it. Yeah, thank you. And uh, yeah, we'll maybe on this note we'll say goodbye. Uh, I think we should. Yes, keep yeah. it keep it brief as possible. Brief, yeah. Leave uh, some for next. next yeah, time. yeah, definitely. So, <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. So nice to connect to you.